2017's Lady Bird, directed by Greta Gerwig, follows the titular Lady Bird, played by Saoirse Ronan, as she wrestles with her ambition while being constrained to a life of suburbia full of disappointing realities. She tells her first boyfriend, Danny, of her dreams of Paris, and elaborates on how her mother, Marion McPherson, constantly stifles her optimism and ambition. This cycle of zealous eagerness, followed by the harsh realities of her life as a daughter of a low-income family that isn't particularly popular or smart, always ends up humbling her. We can see this cycle with the various boys in her life, Danny, Kyle, and uh, David from college. I'm not even kidding, that's what IMDB labels him as. She is initially head over heels with Danny due to his dashingly good looks, interest in theater, and of course, the fact that he genuinely respects her. However, when the oh-so-shocking reality of his homosexuality is revealed, it leaves her writhing in pain on her bed, alone. However, her hopes are once again lifted when she meets the elusive Kyle, played by Timothy Chalamet, who seduces her with his rebelliousness and, uh, lack of participation in the economy, I guess? But of course, she is once again disappointed when the sex is lacking and his pretentiousness comes to a head as he deems himself too cool for prom, an event that Lady Bird was supremely excited about. And lastly, her brief hookup with David from college leaves her not so much with a stomach full of butterflies, but a stomach full of alcohol that demands to be pumped. You would think the last boy would be different since he is free from the monotony of the suburban hell that Lady Bird despises, but this is not the case, thus perpetuating the cycle of disappointment. Of course, boys are not the only thing that Lady Bird uses as an escape from suburbia. Her school plays are one way in which she truly gets to express her inner creativity and passion. It allows her to briefly escape into her fantasy world, full of songs and smiles, where everyone plays a character and uses a fake name. When contrasted with her actual life, where her family struggles with their financials and people are reluctant to call her by her preferred moniker, it seems pretty idyllic. However, even that comes to a halt when a new theater instructor replaces the old love theater instructor due to his depression. This theater instructor clearly does not cut it and ruins one of Lady Bird's main outlets. Of course, her mother also acts as a constant buzzkill to Lady Bird's optimism as well. When Lady Bird asks if she can buy a $3 magazine because she had a bad week so she can read in bed, her mother swiftly and efficiently delivers a hearty dose of disappointment when she says that that is something that only rich people do. We see even more severe scorn when her mother essentially calls her trash because she cannot fold her clothes correctly. All heated situations involving the mother can always be traced back to her financial struggles, and it once again highlights the disappointing realities of suburbia. For many people, it is not about pool parties and cool clothes, it is about trying to maintain their quality of life through labor, rather than self-actualizing. Lady Bird always jokes about how she is from the wrong side of the tracks. Of course, this expression shows how her poverty has metaphorically divided her from others, and thus has limited her opportunities. She yearns to break free and show the world who she really is. After several rejection letters, a waitlist, and a family feud about her college ambitions, she eventually does get to go to New York. This, at least to me, represents her initial romanticism of Paris, a city that she essentially believes to be her true escape. However, one final blow of disappointment is given to her as she realizes her new city is hectic and confusing. It is as if Lady Bird constantly felt she was not expressing her true potential or not in her element, simply because of her surroundings, and moving to a new city would magically fix everything. It ends up being an extremely humbling experience for her as she starts to miss some of the simplicity of her hometown, Sacramento, which she cannot run from, despite her attempt to transform herself in front of David. From college. And in a touching final moment, she does find salvation in a church choir, reminiscent of the church choir she sang back in Sacramento. Ultimately, it goes to show that you cannot run from yourself, and the throttling of your potential and ambition cannot be merely explained away by where you are from or your income level. In the classic fashion of a Bildong's roman, Lady Bird does mature a little, even accepting her given name of Christine, and realizes that she must not squander her potential on fake friends, boys, and prank school campaigns, but attempt to actualize herself by focusing on what she truly loves, family, and singing like a bird. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this episode of Thought Time. If you enjoyed what you saw, please remember to like and subscribe, and tell me what you thought about this film in the comments. Until next time. Also, like, I'm trying to, as much as possible not participate in our economy.